Is it Pam? Pam, why did you come out today? You got a desire to change. A desire to change. Are you, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Okay, I mean, that's the point you get when you, when you got a desire to change. Nora, hola. Come on, sir. Hola. Hola. Oh, she don't want to speak Spanish because she don't know we can speak that like that, you know. We ain't going to talk about y'all in front of y'all. <laughs> to renew your mind. mind. To renew your mind. Brother from uh, Christian Directory. Shaw, right? Shaw, last name, right? Shaw, yeah. Shaw, okay, Mr. Shaw. Why did you come out today? I want to be wealthy. You want to be wealthy? Let me ask you a question, since you'll be wealthy. What is wealthy to you? Wealthy is a lot of money. Okay, how much is a lot of money? <laughs> how much is a lot? Wealthy. I mean, hold on, hold on. A lot is, if I'm in, a lot is, how much is a lot? Bill Gates type money. Bill Gates type money. How much is Bill Gates type money? How much is your lot, though? Infinity, but infinity be close to zero because you got negative infinity and you got infinity. So my first question to you is, if you want a lot, why you don't have a lot written down on your paper? Because a lot will never come if you can never define it. A lot, a lot. I want a lot. What's a lot? I want a lot. Put some land, put a house on. A lot is a lot. <laughs> you know, I need to define that which I want. And one of the things that we always got into was just saying, okay, I want a lot. Well, we've been through that stage. It just so happened now, you're not even, uh, it's been now maybe 10 years, 10 years ago now. But there was a time when my Wife and I, we, 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 we were living in Buffalo, New York, and we were, you know, doing everything. And, and then just one day I came home, and my wife was furious. She was mad. She said to me, Michael, take me to the bank. Take me to the bank. <laughs> and I said, well, honey, I said, no problem. Since you got to go by the bank, and well, it's about lunchtime, so we just get some money out, we can go get something to eat. Well, the reason why she was fretting because of the fact that one, she had gotten a little white envelope in the mail. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It said NSF. <laughs> now, it's sufficient fun. I, I said, it ain't no big deal. It ain't the first white envelope we had in the mail. No big deal. So she then got in the car because I'm always going to be obedient. All right? I'm going to drive her to the bank. We get down to the bank. She can't even wait until the car stops. She get down the car. <laughs> she go into the bank, and I said, you know, because the brother I am, I'm going to go in the bank behind her because I want to make sure that there's no altercations. <laughs> and we don't come out of here in handcuffs. <laughs> so I just want to be sure of that. So she go into the bank. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, Michael, he loves... He loves this story, <laughs> you know. Even before, even when we say we're not going to go there, he still goes there. You know, he loves this story. Um, I used to be uncomfortable with this story, but I have grown past this story where I can talk about this story and still laugh about it. Because then she wasn't laughing. No, She was no. furious. No. And, and she went inside the bank. Miss, I got to tell the rest of it. <laughs> she went inside the bank. She told the banker, I want all my money in the bank. I want to see a manager. <laughs> I want to see a manager. And she said to the banker, I want all my money in the bank. I want to speak to a manager. Well, the, man, the, the, you know, the teller, she was, you know how tellers can be. You know, they ain't working about $8, $9 an hour. So, you know, don't expect her to be all nice, especially when you don't bounce a check. So the lady teller went, well, ma'am, let me see if I can help you. And then the teller went, click, 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 click. Click, click, click. Click. And she looked at our no money account. And she said, Mrs. Woods, how would you like that $217 in tens or twenties? 
and I believe it was two hundred and twenty seven dollars. <laughs> You know, he always, he always messes up the amount. But it, was, it wasn't important to me. But see, it was very important to me because the check was off by like, I think it was 30 cents or something like that. But that was my thinking back then. That was my rationale. I, used to, I, I went to the bank every single day. As a matter of fact, till this day, I make a deposit every single day. And every business owner should make a deposit every single day, no matter how busy you are. Now, because I went to the bank every single day, and I spoke to the teller, hey, Mary, how you doing? Hey, Ramona, how you doing? You know, I, I spoke to the teller every single day. She knew that I was coming before 2 o'clock. You know, got to meet the 2 o'clock deadline every single day. And when my check came back, you talking about somebody who was hot. I was so upset, but at the time, I did not realize that I was upset really with us. Mm. I mean, it did not hit me until after the fact. You know how sometimes you lose control of yourself? You, she was mad. You know, <laughs> I was upset. And then what made it even worse was when I asked the teller, give me all my money, and she just gave it to me. I wanted her to beg me to stay. I mean, you know, I wanted, you know what I'm saying? We have I two wanted some dollars in there. And she was like, okay, you know, and she gave it to me in cash. She didn't give me a certified check or anything like that. She just gave it to me in cash. And we, hey, Wendy, so good to see you. Sorry, that was in a uh, 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 station break. Um, I was, for the first time in my life, I saw myself for who I really was. I saw myself for who I was worth. I, we were, we were broke, we were busted, we were full of excuses all the time. Mm. We looked good. Oh, I look good now, I look good! <laughs> I walk up in there looking good. I mean, Michael wore, Michael has always worn suits. I mean, he's always worn suits. Look good. I was broke, but I what? Look good. But we were writing bad checks. And we were literally, we were living paycheck to paycheck. We weren't saving no money. Our credit was real bad. And that check that I wrote was to an individual. And had that check been to Belks or we have Belks here in Rochester, to um, Hex, JC uh, Penney's, if it was to a department store or to a place that, you know, they don't have immediate person to person contact, then I probably would have continued. Because you want to take the JC Penney, I can just go to what? Kaufman's. Right. You know, it, it doesn't. It I doesn't don't like JC Penney no more. Right. Yes, and I mean, I used to do that. Oh, I, I don't really like Harris T. Well, I'm forgetting the broken story. I don't like Win Dixie. Um, I like? like Tops. You know, if I wrote a bad check at Tops and they don't take my checks anymore, well, I would go to a different grocery store. You know, I, I don't like Tops. But I, but it's not that I didn't like Tops. It's that Tops didn't like me. You know, and so many of us were in that position. And the day that you embrace who you really are. It's going to open your eyes. Now, was it a painful experience? Yes. But there is no way in the world that my husband and I would be legitimate millionaires today. And I mean, it's really hard for me to really even accept the fact that we are what we are, you know, that we can fly our technicians to Las Vegas, an all expense trip, and, you know, and and still, our business still moves on. It's, I mean, I still haven't come to grips with this thing. Uh -huh. um, and, 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 and stop right there for one second. Did y'all hear what she just said? She still hasn't come to grips with it. You know? And the main reason is, it goes back to when we first started. Remember who was over there? Mentally. We were, we were successful people once upon a time. But as we began to tra transition from there through the ocean, as we got across the ocean, we were speaking our language. Then we got over here, and they did not speak the same dialect. 
So because we could not speak English, we did not feel like we were worthy. Our minds hadn't gotten, hadn't caught up yet. So her feeling was justifiable in that she had not gotten there mentally. So you can get there physically, but if your mind is not there yet, it's kind of hard for you to understand what you should be feeling. Because when other people look at us, they're like, wow, we did a seminar, all Caucasians, room packed, about 500 people. They charge $80 a head. No food. <laughs> now, you know you charge $80, you have the food, right? I mean, tell me the truth. The room was packed. The seminar that we're supposed to have been doing was only supposed to be two hours. They kept us two hours doing a Q&A, a question and answer session, because their question was, how could you do this and you are Afro-American and Hispanic? You are not Caucasian. How could you do this, get from this level to this level, and we can't? Ooh. They, oh! Don't that just burn you up? You got there. Again, they didn't think we were. But we knew there was a history behind us as a people that we have always been worthy. Our minds had just not caught up with it. And once your mind catch up with it, you begin to have a whole different attitude about life. Your mind must be there. Go ahead. I'm, I'm excited, honey. I'm excited. Y'all just don't know how excited I am. Well, you know, at that point, at that point in our lives, when I reached the point that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you'll know when you get to the point that you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Now, if you say, oh, I, I, I can't spend $10 to come to such and such, you haven't reached the point that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you say, no, I can't spend $39.95 on getting all three copies of my credit report, then you haven't reached the point that you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So you've got to see the signs within yourself of whether or not you really are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because when you reach the point of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, you will change at all costs. At a drop of a dime. You will make that change. And see, as men sometimes, see, my defining moment did not come at the same time as Ramona's defining moment. She got sick and tired that day at the bank. I wasn't sick and tired yet. <laughs> but I, I, knew, <laughs> I knew that I could not go back to living the way we were living. And I, I, I knew I could not deal with him also, plus deal with me. You see what I'm saying? Because so, I, in, in my mind, in my mind, we were doing okay. Right. Because I look what? I still look good. But see, so many of us who have a husband or children or someone in our lives will say, oh, I haven't made the changes yet because you know, Jack hasn't, well, you know Jack, and, and you know he, and, and you know, but see, you have to work on you. Mm. See, when you work on you, and when you reach that point that I reached, there is nothing, no husband, no children, no cat, no dog, I mean, nothing will, you will not turn back. Your focus is only going to be making that change. And I promise you that your spouse, your significant other, they will make that change when they see, oh, this woman is serious. But it takes time. It took some time for him to get. But in the meantime, what I did was I 
called um, the different credit reports. I got his and mine. You ain't had to pull mine, honey. You ain't had to pull mine. You ain't had, you ain't had to pull mine. I mean, I know what I'm working with. Right, but he wasn't ready to go there with me, so I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to physically take him with me because he was too heavy of a load. I was too heavy of a load for myself. So to add him on was going to be just way too much for me. So I just minded my own little business, and I pulled his and pulled mine. I started doing charts of our debt, and I would put it where he could see it. Right on the bathroom mirror. I mean, brother can't brush his teeth without looking at them. Bills, bills, bills. Got to wash his face. Bills, bills, bills. Bills everywhere. Can't even go to the bathroom without looking at them bills on the mirror. See, the moment that she began to put the, the, the writing on the wall, literally, I could no longer run. I couldn't hide. Because there were some challenges that we, were, that, we, that we were going through that everybody go through. Everybody can relate to our story. Everybody can relate. The only thing that we did was wake up and say, it's time to make a change. It's time to make that change. And you don't just make it. It's a process. She went through some of the steps. She pulled the credit reports. Well, after you pull the credit report, you know, you know what you're working with. And a lot of people are afraid to face that big green monkey. They're afraid, they're afraid. And I know I was a little afraid. I mean, there was a few bills that I hadn't paid. I knew what those were. But I didn't know about them other ones that I forgot to pay. But when I saw them, it kind of shocked me. So you, you, you begin to deal with the issues. So the moment that you begin to get to make a change, if you don't pull your credit report, you are wasting your time. Right, and that's where you go into fact what? number one, which is fear. Dealing with the fear of dealing with you. Dealing with who? Who? No. See, everyone will put the blame on somebody else. It's you. It ain't your husband, it's you. It ain't your kids, it's you. But you want to blame somebody else while you're not there, while you're not successful, while you don't have a lot of money, while you're not doing the best that you can do in life, while you own welfare, while you don't have a million dollars, while you don't have a half a million dollars, while you don't have $20 in the bank. You want to blame somebody else. It's easy to blame somebody else because you're pointing the finger. It's easy. But every time you blame somebody, you just get lower and lower. Your self-esteem just get lower and lower. You just get so low down. Every time you blame somebody else, you get low down. <laughs> Instead of you just facing the fact, stand up, and say, I'm going to make some changes. But you know, when, when, when you see his, his performance there, that he's getting lower and lower, right? It's very visual, but what's happening to you when you blame other people is that you become weaker as far as your strength in making the changes that you have to make. So it is important that you start turning that finger towards yourself. And at first, because you become so weak because you've been blaming everybody else, it's going to be tough. But if you start saying, okay, the past is the past. The past is the what? Past. That's yesterday. That's yesterday. I got a new lease on life today. And I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to turn this thing around. I'm going to turn it around. We talk about fear. I'll get, I'll go to for, for you today is for us to share our test. Question. Tithing. Go back one. Can you go back one, Will? We'll make sure you get you all get these points as well. The There's five some facts. facts about stewardship that everyone must know. The first F is fear. The second one is attitude. The third one is commitment. 
The next one is tithing, and the S is for stewardship. Fear, attitude, commitment, tithing, and stewardship. See, there's some fear that's going to come about. You're going to be afraid to pull that credit report. You're going to be afraid. I'm telling you, you're going to be afraid. Because you're not ready to face it yet. But the moment you begin to ready to face that fear, oh, your life begins. You have, woo! Our objective is also is to give you the lesson plan. Give you what type of plan? Lesson plan. Uh, I need to make sure everybody has something to write with because I'm telling you, it may give you all something. Just one, one word may... If you ain't got a pen, tell your neighbor, girl, give me that pen on your pocketbook. <laughs> I may not get it back. <laughs> and our objective is also is to use facts, F-A-C-T-S, to verify its validity. See, if we started out with the answers before we took the test, we'd be a lot further ahead. Anybody, anybody ever cheated before and, 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 and you ain't got to raise your hand? Because I know what you look like. I know who cheated. <laughs> but in, in school every now and then, you want to cheat. And you want to get the answers before you take the test. I'm not used to cheat. I got the answers. I still failed the test. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing wrong. <laughs> but see, when you cheat, you just don't get ahead. But we're giving you the answers. You should ask yourself three questions. What's the first question, Ramona? Why did you come? Why did you come? Why did you come? Not because your girlfriend coming. Not because your boyfriend's coming. Not because your husband's coming. Why did you come? Because the seminar is, you're not just coming to a regular seminar. You're paying to come to this workshop. You come because you want some new information, something different. And today we're going to deliver. What do you want to leave with? What do you want to leave with? If you don't know why you came, you need to leave. Because you're wasting your time. And time is money. And money is time. So you can waste it you want to. And then, what do you want to leave with? What do I want to take away from here? That I, that, that I need, that I need. That I need because everybody's in different positions different places in their life. What is it that you want to leave with? When do you expect to see a return on your investment? When do you expect to see a return? Because you got to have every investment should give a return. Because you invested your time. Didn't you invest your time? And time is what? And money is what? So I need to see it a return on my investment at some point in time. Facts. If you aren't experiencing fear at some point in your journey, there is a very good chance that you aren't doing anything. If you aren't experiencing fear, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't scared of nothing, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing. Because they always say, if you're scared, say you're scared. I ain't scared. You ain't doing nothing. Because when you're ready to go to that next level of reaching your finances, coming out of debt, building your, your, your you know, wealth for your family, you're going to be scared. Yes. It's legitimate. She said, is being scared of success legitimate? Yes. Being scared of poverty, too. Being scared to be broke, that's legitimate. She said, is being scared to be successful a legitimate fear? Yes. Ask anybody who's become successful. They will tell you that it frightened them because they didn't know how to handle it. It's something new. Because, right. I mean, in, in when you are... If you stay in your own, in your same ways, you rarely feel uncomfortable. You rarely feel fear. But as soon as you desire more, mm. hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. As soon as you hold get on, that, you said desire more. You, 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 
You didn't say get there yet. No. No, no, no. We, we don't have it in our hand. As soon as you have the desire, Ooh. right away, that fear, it almost becomes paralyzing. And you see, you will see that you are growing as an individual because the, the, the fear comes in different stages. And every time you break through that fear, you are one level further ahead. And then you break through that other fear, and then it's like climbing a ladder in this, this world, in this life. You are constantly, you need to constantly set a different goal and you bust through that goal and then you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Mm. You know, and then you're comfortable again there. But see, too many of us, whether we have a, a little business and we think we got it going on and, you know, we, we're able to pay our bills. And, but as soon as you say, oh, you know, I think I want to purchase this building. All kinds of stuff comes up. All kinds of crazy stuff comes up. See, but, but that is, that's the point where you say, okay, this is my goal. And I'm going through this no matter what. And you run through that. And then you'll see that the next time you want to purchase a building, you won't ever have to deal with that same fear again. You see now, what I'm saying? Now, you have some other fears. Right. But that fear will be gone. Yes. Because you, can, you, you move through them. Mm -hmm. You move through them. And so you got to ask yourself, what is it that you want? What is it that you desire? Because if you don't have a fear about something, chances are you ain't doing nothing. Yeah. And there are all types of fear. Fear of being in debt. Fear of losing a loved one. Fear of being broke. Fear of having too much money. Who want to have that fear? Fear of having too much money. That's a good fear. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> but there's a fear there. Because once you continue to work through life, sometimes you get to the point where you just say, look, you know, I'm not going to stop working because I'm, I'm afraid I may lose something. So there's a fear of having too much money. Don't think the people who just got a lot of money that they're not afraid too. They are. Fear but of being fear married. But now, 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 this is the fear you want to get out of right here. Fear of being in debt. Fear of being broke. You need to break through those fears right there. But, you know, one very important one is this last one. Fear of making tough decisions. Fear of making what type of decisions? Tough decisions. Tough decisions. When you break through the fear of making tough decisions, you will see that you will stay in that paralyzing state very short periods of time. Because most of the time, it could be that you're afraid to quit your job. You hate it. I mean, you hate I it. I hate going to work at this job. Passion. They ain't paying me no money. I'm working like a slave around here. You hate it, and you're afraid to quit. But I ain't going to quit. You hate who you're working with, and you hate to let them go. You, that is fear of making a decision. Tough decisions. Now, there are four types of people. How many types are there? There's the faithful, committed, concerned, and the drifter. Faithful, committed, concerned, and the drifter. Turn it off, Will. That's all y'all need to know. Answer these questions for me. How many hours do you currently work on your own business? Not How many at, now, hours? Not at say, your job. But at the business that you're either starting, that you're dreaming about doing, at, you know, your, your, your business. How many hours do you currently work on your own business? I mean, how often or how long do you work on improving your business? I didn't say go to work. I said work on. So be careful what you write down on the paper now. Daily. How many hours? You see, yeah. you got a choice. You got four, six, eight, twelve per day. Right. Hours per day. Just circle with the one you... You, you. you can't work at it all day long, 24 hours in a day. <laughs> and if you work 12 hours a week on it... <laughs> Do you have a written business plan? Written. Yes or no? When we say written business plan, we don't mean a, a, a plan on the back of a napkin. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start my own business and, you know... <laughs> 
No, but you have a written business plan, and a written business plan has on it a budget sheet, a break-even analysis, a, a profit and loss statement, 12-month projection. If you don't have a written business plan, you write down yes or no. How many business seminars do you attend per year? How many business seminars? Not parties. All right, business seminars, where this business seminar, everybody got one because you're here today. Everybody got one, but a real business seminar that's helping you to develop your mind. Do you belong to your local chamber of commerce? That's yes an easy no. question. If you don't belong yes to the no. chamber, put no. If you belong to the chamber, put yes. Every state, country, they have a local business commerce. How many trade shows do you attend per year in your industry? In your industry. If you are a baker, they have baking trade shows. If you are a tailor, they have tailored uh, fabrics seminars. Uh, seminars. If you're an attorney, do you go and learn what's going on with attorneys? Or are you just using the same old mathematics you used to use? Hiding people money. <laughs> I know there ain't no attorneys out here. <laughs> How but many? How many do you attend to improve your, your skills? How many complete mail outs do you do per year? Now, if you're in business, desiring to go into business, it doesn't make a difference. How many pieces of information do you go to the mailbox, put in to send out to either your client or your potential client? Mail outs, not, here go a handout. Hey, my brother, I got a little car wash on the side. <laughs> not give them a flyer. Mail outs. You know how to do a mail out, you got to have a name, address, telephone number, city, state, zip. And a stamp. And a stamp. <laughs> That's right. Um, well, how many? If you, if you don't, then you just circle zero. Zero. Email. Some folks ain't got no computer. <laughs> email don't even count. Because <laughs> if we talked about who got a computer in the house, this would be a quiet subject. Quiet subject. We ain't got to the point where we can write a letter, much less email. Some people do. But overall, a lot of people don't because they don't see the need in having the latest technology. Your kids can't even do homework now without a computer. And their house without a computer. How are they going to compete? They can't even get online. Remind me of some crazy stuff. I, how many of y'all ever had an encyclopedia in your house? How many ever had encyclopedias? Every family had encyclopedia. I remember one time I tried to do my project, I couldn't find the letter D. <laughs> Who took that D? I'm looking everywhere for that D encyclopedia. I'm looking everywhere, can't find D. Next month, M and N missing. God can't do my homework. Do you know how long it takes? at today's time to try to find a fact in the encyclopedia? Kids can't keep up. Now my daughters can go to google.com, dictionary.com, daddy go look on this right here, this website right here, boom, you can find your answer right now. Facts.com, yeah, I would have to spend months trying to do my homework if I had encyclopedias this day and time. If you don't have a computer in your house, y'all better come up, come up. Okay, last one. How many educational parties did you have for your customers this year? Woo! Educational party you have for who? Your customers. Ms. Gaines, you got a daycare, right? You got a daycare, right? Have you brought the mamas in and told the mamas what the kids are going to do this year? Because if I can educate the mamas, the kids will act better. Because an educated customer is the best type of customer to have. And you never run a business with an uneducated clientele. Because all it takes is one bad rumor to ruin your whole business. All it takes is one. But an educated person can make the best decision. So you got your answers down. Everybody got the answers? Okay. Now we're going we're gonna to tally this as a group, okay? So y'all have to, got to follow me, okay? Number one. If you circled four, 
If you circle four, this is question number one. Okay. Oh, right beside that question, I want you to put a little round circle. Put a round circle. And inside okay. that box, we'll give you a number. We'll give you a number. For question number one, if you answered four, you, you will, you're going to give yourself a four. If you answered six, give yourself a three. If you answered eight, give yourself a two. If you answered 12, give yourself a one. Let's repeat that again. If you answered four, you're going to give yourself a what? Four. If you answered six, three. eight, two. 12. One. Question number two, if you answered yes, give yourself a one. If you answered no, give yourself a four. Number three, if you answered zero, give yourself a four. One to two, give yourself a three. Three to four, give yourself a two. Five to six, give yourself a one. Number four, yes, give yourself a one. No, give yourself a four. Number five, you said zero, give yourself a four. One, a three. If you answer two, it'll be two. And if you answer three, give yourself a one. Yes. If you, give, if you answered zero, you give yourself a four. If you answered one, give yourself a three. If you answer two, give yourself a two. If you answer three, give yourself a one. one. Okay, number six. If you answered seven to eight, give yourself a one. If you answered three to four, give yourself a two. One, give yourself a three. Zero, give yourself a four. And the last one, if you said zero, give yourself a four. One, give yourself a three. Two, give yourself a two. And three, give yourself a, a one. Repeat that again. Zero. It's four. One. Three. Two. Two. And three. One. Now, tally those answers up. Tally, tally your up. numbers. Tally the numbers that you wrote down. And at the bottom of your paper, put down the complete total that you got. Mm -mm. I'm excited today. I just couldn't sleep last night, man. Oh, I couldn't sleep. Nate, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited about today. Does everybody have their total? Yes, June. On for four, yes, for yes, you give yourself a one, and for no, give yourself a four. Number five, for zero, it's four. One is three. Two is two, and three is one. Mm. That's some good stuff there. Everybody ready? Everybody See, because we talked total? about the four categories. They were faithful, committed, concerned, and drifter, correct? That's right. If you scored from 22 <laughs> to 28, If you scored from 15 to 22, if you scored from 11 to 14, you can write down committed. And if you wrote, scored from 7 to 10, you can write down faithful. Now, I want to give you the characteristics of these four. Because, see, when you, when you understand the characteristics, it helps you to better understand why you are where you are. See, everybody want to be faithful. Everybody think they're faithful in handling their money, in becoming a good steward, in running their business, in doing the necessary things to grow personally. And in a relationship, you can think you're faithful. 
Are you with me? But see, when you look at it based on the numbers, you may fall in a different category. See, let me first talk about the drifters. Drifters don't make tough decisions. They are happy where they are. And you can always tell a drifter because a drifter is always in somebody else's business. What you doing? They are good messengers because a drifter can circulate news faster than anybody else. Tell a drifter it's in there. It's all over the place. Drifters don't face the facts about themselves because they're too busy dealing with somebody else's business. See, as a drifter, they don't even have vision for themselves. Therefore, whatever comes along, they get attached by it because they're drifting. Oh, all of us have been drifters. All of us. That's why we know. See, we've been there too. Drifters write continuous bad checks. Continuous bad checks. A, a drifter will write a check today and write a check tomorrow. And knowing the money ain't in there, not even next week. <laughs> yes. That's a drifter, baby. That's a drifter. <laughs> they always trying to do this, trying to do that. And sometimes drifters don't even try. That's a drifter. Her question was, would you, would you consider a drifter somebody who's trying to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that to do too many things at one time? Yes, they're a drifter. We all have been there. I want, to, I want to start a car company. I want to start this kind of business. I want to start a daycare. On top of that, I want to start a mama care. <laughs> Make up your mind what you want to do. So drifter. Then we get into people who are concerned. You ever hear about who just really concerned about what you're doing? I mean, you got you to understand the catch with concern because a concerned person will always lend you their ear. And then make, they'll make you seem like they really care. Say what? Thank you, Mr. Chappelle. Say what? And you going through that? Oh, girl, tell me some more, tell me some more. Give me some more. They are concerned, but they're not concerned enough to make the changes in their own life. That's why when you're trying to move from one category to the next category, you got to be, be, be concerned about who you are associated with. Because just because somebody hear you don't mean they really understand you. So you can't be telling all your stuff, sharing with everybody. They don't care. You can look in the eyes. If they look at you like this. <laughs> and the more you tell they wrinkle their face something even more. <laughs> That's concern. Are y'all with me? So you got to be very careful with the concern because the concern also, they don't have their focal ability on, them, on their own business. They're concerned about it, but they're not really concerned enough to make the changes. Why haven't you sent out mail out to your potential clients? Why haven't you done the necessary things to grow your business? Why haven't you got more education about your business? I ain't saying go out to school and get a degree in nursing when you're already doing something that, that has a, you know, legs to run on. People do the craziest stuff. He done been in the business for 10 years. 10 years. Go down that road for 10. The business has the potential to be successful. They turn around. I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> and they got to start all over again. That's concern. That's a drifter. They're very close. Very close. Committed. Oh, this is a good group here. See, the committed at least going to do something about it. Now, the committed don't always get the proper information, right. but you ever had somebody who you, I mean, 
think about yourself. You remember you work, to, you work for a job, and there's just some days you won't go call in on your boss and tell me you won't come in. I mean, I, I, I just can't do that to my boss. I can't do it to him. I'm committed to this job. I don't care if they ain't paying me what I really want to make. It's still a job because some people are unemployed. So I'm committed enough to come to work every day. I'm committed enough to do the jobs that I have to do because my family has to eat. I'm committed to that. If I join Mary Kay, I'm in Mary Kay. If I join this organization, I'm in it. Those who I stand with, they will be committed to it because they made a commitment. Made a commitment is a big thing. That's a big thing, commitment. I want people around me who are committed. I want employees who are committed. I want them. They're good people. And see, that a lot of times people can, 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 they, they can have the mis misconception that because you have the education makes you more committed. No. Because you have more commitment, period, allows you to be more committed. Education, is that, that's an advantage, but you have some uneducated folks who are drifters. And you have some educated folks who are drifters. And the educated folk, so educated, they don't even know they're drifters. <laughs> because they ain't heard that word before. That's not in their vocabulary. They just think they're multitasking. <laughs> you know, they, they, they're jack of all trades. Are you with me? You got to be very careful. But once you get to the point where you're committed, you're moving very aggressively. You're doing some things in your business. You go right back to that sheet. You go right back here. Okay, now I'm doing some things. Okay, how many hours you work on your business? I'm working on my own business, six, eight hours a day. I'm working on my own business. I'm now, I got a business plan together. I got a real business plan. I don't have no fake business plan. I'm committed to turning this thing around. I'm committed to changing my finances at home. At home. Every man want to be a superman in his own house. Every man want to be a superman in his own house. When we can't be a superman in our own house, how are we going to go out there and be a superman to the people? But when you become committed, you begin to say, I'm going to turn this thing around. See, I got to that point. I did not have my defining moment the moment Ramona had hers. I didn't have mine then. I wasn't ready to change because I what? I still look what? <laughs> I still look good. But it was a day that I did have to face that. And the day that I had to face it, I was right here in Rochester. I flew from North Carolina to New York. The banker told me, he told me I was going to get that loan. He told me in North Carolina, he told me on the telephone, he said, Mike, I did all the paperwork and everything. He told me I was going to get that loan for $25,000. He told me that. Now, you know if you tell a brother you're going to get a loan for $25,000, that money is spent. <laughs> I mean, I ain't had to fly to New York to get the money. That money was spent before I left from North Carolina. And I sit down, I fly to New York, and I get in front of the bank, and right here, Chase, Chase Manhattan Bank. And I'm sitting down in front of them, you know, and Mary Capone is the person I'm dealing with, and Mary, a beautiful lady. And I, 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 can, I can call their names out because one day I don't know what they did for me. I was sitting down at the table, and uh, Bob was in New York, and this is one of the head guys. And he didn't even fly down to New York to see me from New York to here. It was an hour flight. He could have caught that flight. I caught my flight, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, he got me on the speakerphone, and then he tell me, on this thing, Michael, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bob, how you doing? And he explained to me all the different things that, you know, that we were doing well. So I was sticking my chest out. I said, y'all, we doing this well, I know I'm going to get that money. And then he got to, the, to, 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 to words that began to have a different uh, connotated meaning. He started saying stuff like, however. <laughs> he used a word called but. <laughs> he never used the word nevertheless. <laughs> so as he began to say those other words that had a negative meaning to me, he finally got down. I can feel myself. <laughs> I can feel myself sinking. You know, you can feel it. And then he got to the point where he told me. He said, Michael, we cannot do this loan. <laughs> I sat there for about maybe five seconds, and I felt myself sinking out of the chair. And I felt myself, I felt myself going through a transformation. 
See, I felt myself at a point where I just wanted to, I, wa I was so mad. I felt myself turn into a super Negro. I, just, I felt it coming. I knew, I knew it. If you know what it felt like to turn into a super Negro, you get. You know how you get your feeling coming? Oh, I had to, I had to catch, I saw myself pacing around the room. Ooh, calm, calm down, brother, calm down, because you don't want to go out of here in handcuffs. I felt it. You know when you, when you, when you turn down? It's a demoralizing feeling. Had I known he was going to turn me down, he should have told me. Before I left from North Carolina, I wouldn't have bought the airline ticket. I done spent $25,278. That was the airline ticket plus $25,000 he's going to give me. But I, I, I pulled myself together. And I sat there and I said, well, I said, Mary, Bob, his words that he left me with was, Michael, it's your business. You turn around. Those words have rang in my ears from that point on. Because as a man, he made me mad. But I was no longer mad at him. I was mad at me. Because I had not been the steward of my own business. I walked from the corridor. Next time y'all ride down Clinton Avenue, it's now J.P. Morgan, I see. It's J.P. Morgan now, yeah. But next time you all run, ride down there, you're going to see a corridor from one side of the building in Chase to the other side for the Midtown Plaza. There's a corridor that goes across the top. As I walked through that corridor, I saw myself for who I really was. I was faking it. I was trying to grow a business without having the proper knowledge. I wanted to make a lot of money, never defined what a lot was. I never took the time to learn the things I needed to know in order to grow my business. I was at that point. When I walked across that corridor, I said, it's on. I'm going to show him. Gonna, I'm not going to feel that way again. I'm not going to feel that way again. I walked from the mall on one side. That day, I walked into the mall, and we had a client, Debbie Williams. Mm -hmm. Debbie's salon is on the other side in Midtown Plaza at the time. I walked in Debbie's salon. And I'm, I kept beeping him from North Carolina. Beep, 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 beep. Turn that off. I kept beeping him all day because beep, the beep. meeting was at 9. We really did. We had already spent the money. Gone. And I, all, I needed beep. to know whether he was going to wire it, whether he was bringing a check with beep, him, beep. or whether he was just going to do, you know, direct deposit from here. You know, because checks were already written out. And, you know, we had to catch these checks. And he would not, he, at that time, we couldn't afford a cell. So he had a pager. Beep, beep, beep. And he would not call me back. I couldn't deal with no more negative stuff. <laughs> I had enough to deal with. Are y'all with me? When you're in that transition mode, you can't deal with the more negative stuff. She only had three questions. Did I get the money? When am I going to send it to her? When am I going to bring it back to her? All three answers were no, no, and no. I didn't have time to deal with that other stuff. I walked out of that bank. I walked across to that salon that Debbie had in the mall. And I started looking around Debbie's salon. And I said, Debbie, you need some Ashtay relaxer. You need some Ashtay shampoo. I started shaking containers. I started moving. I started looking underneath her cabinet. I was looking. <laughs> you need some color. You need some scalp balm. You need everything. I think I sold Debbie $374 in products that day. Did Debbie need everything? No, I needed everything. <laughs> I needed it. I went to the next salon. I went to the next salon. That morning, I left in that bank. I worked harder that day than I have ever worked in my entire life. I worked till, I mean, it was about 9 o'clock at night. I was still driving around looking for a light on. I didn't care if the light was off. If I just saw a winkle, a tingle of light, 
I would run up to the house and knock on the door. Miss Mary, I know you in there. I was at that point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was sick and tired of being denied. And see, as a man, you can't get denied, but so many times do you begin to feel like you're less of a man. And as a woman, it's the same way. Right, and that was definitely his defining moment because at, when he, he finally called me at about maybe 10.30 at night. Now, keep in mind, I had been paging him since 9 o'clock in the morning. I won't answer him. And he did not want to deal with me because we had already spent the money. And we were really about to go out of business. And when he, when he called me, you know, I was upset. But we had already been through so much. I was like, Mike, why haven't you called me? You know, are, are you bringing the check with you? That's all I want. <laughs> she didn't say, honey, how are you? <laughs> how you doing? And um, he said immediately, we didn't get the loan. And my heart just sank. I was like, oh my God, what do we do? In my mind. But before I even asked the question, he said, Ramona, I'll be there first thing tomorrow morning. We'll deal with it then. And he hung up the phone. He wasn't open to conversation. I had or no love nothing. talk. Right. It was just. <laughs> and, and sometimes you don't even talk about love. <laughs> You don't want to have that discussion. It ain't, ain't about love right now. A brother just ain't feeling no love. And when he, when he arrived, when he got in, he said, Ramona, take, put on a credit card, do whatever you have to do, and buy a time clock. Because, see, we were so irresponsible with our own business that we didn't even make our staff punch in. Mm. Everybody just got paid. We were not counting the cost of running a business. Mm -hmm. And we found out about an organization called SCORE where retired executives, they counsel people in business. For so, free, y'all. For free. And they have top executives. Yep. And we went. We SCORE, went in. S C O R E. Yes. S C O R E. Is always, you'll, always find, you'll find it in your white pages. They got some top executives. Right. And um, we went over there, and the gentleman asked us three questions. We did not know the answer to any of them. And here we are. And the man said, now, you own, you, you are the owners, right? Yes. And again, Michael's ego was, Shot again. Shot again because, because I could not answer the questions as a business person. Yes. Like, um, um, on this balance sheet, do you know what the percentage of profit margin you have in each category? Huh? <laughs> and and, and Man, now, I ain't no stuff I like. I'm trying to sell these products. <laughs> Now, and we do, we have a, we, we sell hair care products, so we have inventory. And he asked, what is your turnover ratio? Turnover? Man, I just sold some stuff yesterday. You know, you know how often does your inventory turn over because all on a monthly basis, yearly relative. basis? They were relative to what he needed to know in order to give us the right advice. But see, we didn't understand that. And so we said, well, you know, you went to college. I surely did. You went to college. You went to high school. You went to, you studied math. You, you, all of us studied those things. But it, you understood mathematics. You knew that if you spent more than you made, then your, math would kick in at some point. <laughs> but whether we understood it or not and did it was something totally different. Are y'all with me? See, that was the point where it was again, it brought us back. Brought me back, brought me back, brought me back. Brought so ain't ready yet. at that point, we, um, we went and got a time clock. And some of his questions were, you know, your payroll, it seems very high in comparison to your revenue. And 
you know, he wanted to know what percentage did each employee contribute to the business. Oh, man, contribute? My sister, cousin, uncle, brother. Because we did. I mean, we had a lot of relatives we that, had, we had a that, full staff. that were working for us. And everybody was on salary. See, you can't run a business with everybody on salary. And not knowing what they contribute. Somebody got to be paid hourly. Somebody got to be commissioned. Somebody, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Because that way, you're able to gauge people's performance. And productivity. Yes. See, a lot of times you can think you're worth more. But when that man's looking at your productivity, he may say, well, look, I got one guy over here making $50,000 a year. I got two other guys I can hire that can do twice as much as this one guy over here who I'm paying $50,000. Then I can pay them $27,000 but I'm getting four times the amount of work. See, that may be the difference between them letting you go when they understand your productivity level. Are you with me? So we had to understand that as business owners to make a decision in our business. Oh, man, some good stuff. And at oh. that point, um, every, we, we, Michael had a meeting. And at, you know, Michael, at that point, he was up to here. And um, we were losing everything. We, um, we were, our home was about to be foreclosed because we were fronting you know you know how good it feels to pay somebody you know you you get, you start priority you you start putting priorities on the wrong thing you think that you're not successful business until you have a staff mm -hmm. that you pay your name on the building your name you know, on there <laughs> you know you kind of go through that and that stuff is nonsense and at, at that point, Michael expressed to everyone, from this day forward, you must punch this clock. And not only If that, you don't work, you don't, you don't get, get paid. paid. And we made a drastic move. And a drastic move was, look, I got a tough decision to make. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to go out of business. I need everybody to be in a revenue generating, generating position. position. Revenue generating. generating position. Now, revenue generating means you ain't bringing no money in, you're not going to get a paycheck. Yes. See, that's a, tough, that's a tough call. That was a call that left, I mean, that was a tough call because if I hadn't made that decision, we'd be out of business. But that day, we had a major transition. And everybody quit. I everybody. Mean, every single everybody. person Quit. Revenue generating? Got a bunch of time clock? <laughs> oh, I'm out of here, my brother. I mean, everybody quit. And it was left. We're back in love again. <laughs> again. Because it, was... it takes love to continue to go through those different obstacles. And see, you, if you've never been through them, you don't understand what it's like. But see, as you go through life and you understand those important areas, you begin to understand what's really important. You know, people can throw games at you. See, the difference now is that we see things differently. We've experienced different things. I remember one time, oh, 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 I can remember this too. I remember, clearly, in Buffalo, in the winter, somebody stole my sister-in-law car right out of the driveway. I mean, my sister-in-law my sister woke up one morning, and she was... She was like, somebody done stole my car. Somebody done stole my car. She was fretting all around the house because she stayed upstairs. We stayed downstairs. And she was running, somebody stole my car. And she was running all around the house. Somebody stole my car. I said, call the police. She said, don't call no police. Somebody done stole my car. Well, I said, I know if we call the police, because I use a little logic. If we call the police, because we stay right here, you know, we stay right there in the, in the center of the ghetto. Somebody stole the car. Police ain't coming for like a day. <laughs> so I said, I can go find your car, sister-in-law, because she had to go to work the next day. So I went out, the brother-in-law that I am, and I went out in the neighborhood looking for my sister-in-law car. Because I knew if somebody stole her car, we were going to break it down at. You know, sometimes you know the neighborhood, right? <laughs> I went over to Genesee Street. I roll 
over to the fruit belt. I scooted down on Martin Luther King Drive. I looked everywhere for my sister-in-law car. Couldn't find it nowhere. Came back to the house. My sister-in-law still ran them rabbit. Somebody stole my car. Somebody stole my car. I stopped for a moment. I looked at my sister-in-law. I looked at my brother-in-law. I looked back at my sister-in-law. And a flashback hit me. And I said to myself, ain't nobody stole my sister-in-law car. been repossessed! I said, I said the reason why I knew it had been repossessed because I had a flashback in my mind. I remember that I did the same way when they repossessed mine. Somebody stole my car. Don't call no police. in the same way. But I had to go through that mental flashback to recognize that I have been there, done that. So as challenges come, you'll be able to go through your mindset and realize when somebody's really faking it. Yes? Three years. Yeah, good three years. Three years. But we were going under. Oh, I mean, we were going under. We were definitely about to, we, it, it, the grace of God kept us in business. That's right. It was just the two of us. So we had I, to start all over, over again. again. It was just the two of us, and I was the receptionist, order People taker, People call shipping. the office, and they'll say, could I speak to the accounting department? I'll say, hello, thanks for calling Ash Tay. <laughs> and then... They just want to do the counter, but could you hold on one second, please? Yeah. Hey, Ramona, somebody's <laughs> on the phone for you. <laughs> she would then pick up the line and say, account department. Yeah, accounts receivable, how may I help you? And then on the place in order, she'll send them back to me. Right. And okay, said, you want customer service? Hold on one moment, please. Yeah. Thank you for calling Ashley Potter. <laughs> this is Michael, customer service, how may I help you? <laughs> Are you looking for shipping and receiving? No problem. <laughs> just a moment. <laughs> But you know, when, you, when you're going through that, you, sh you know, it's not, but at the end of the day, you should laugh about it. You got to laugh. Because it only, I mean, it helps you to get through. And, and it helped us to get through. You know, where, you know, I, 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 especially when the bill collectors would call, he always would send them to me. Oh, you, talk, you need accounts payable, hold on one second. You know, and, and, and there, was a, there was a time, there was a time where I had to make up this employee that didn't exist. At, for, at one time, I was Jackie. There was a Jackie that never worked for Ashtay Products, and that was me. You know, because we were running. Running from it. Running just like it. at home, that you're not, Miss Williams? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How many of y'all got to call an ID? Raise your hand. Uh-huh, you've been running too. <laughs> when, when, when you stop running, uh -huh. your phone bill will go down drastically because all those gadgets that you have on your phone, you'll take them off because you'll be able to talk to whomever calls because you. Because the phone. You don't mind talking to anybody. Sure. And see, those were times that were challenging, but we made some tough decisions. So everybody got ideas. I got so many ideas, my wife tell me, shut up. <laughs> I got plenty of ideas. But it starts in your mind. It then trickulates onto paper. When it gets on the paper, there's something that sets inside of you Say, do I want to go for it or don't I? Am I scared or am I just going to sit here on this idea? Because the idea ain't nothing. Everybody got ideas, ideas. People go, oh, I got an idea to start something. Start it. Then right. come back and after see, you start. And the thing about it is that a lot of people, they want the perfect environment. Oh, it got to be just right. Before this perfect idea, 
goes into motion. See, Michael, he's a visionary. He's a dreamer. He has I, woo, ideas. Oh, my God. I wake up with an idea every morning. No, he don't sleep. Sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning, he wakes up. Oh, I got this idea. You know, but see, as his wife, I know when he has an idea that is an idea. Because when this man has an idea that's in here, he can't sleep, he can't eat, it consumes him where that's the only thing he can walk, talk, that's all he thinks about. And that's all his action is that idea. For you to have an idea on paper for two years and not to move on it is because in your soul is not there yet. So it goes back to having that F word, fear. And you see, a lot of us say, well, if you have fear, you don't have no faith. Well, you can have faith and still be scared. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just because you got faith, I mean, you can go to church every single Sunday. You can pray up some stuff. But if you don't get up and go to work, you all prayed up. <laughs> Doing nothing. You too pray. You need to release some of that prayer. Because, I mean, we all have the potential to grow and develop. We all have the same playing field. Right. And this is where, um, when Michael was in the bank and he talked about the super Negro coming out, <laughs> That would have been considered reacting. And when I was at the bank and I, and I was upset and wanted all my money back, I was reacting. That's reacting. And that's what most of us do. We get angry. We get upset. And we react to the little stupid stuff. Because if you really think about it, half the time we get upset is over something so stupid. Stupid. And we, that's why we laugh about crazy stuff now. Honey, you were in the bank, you were so mad at that lady. <laughs> here, here, you wrote the bad check, you get mad at her. <laughs> Woo! That's some stupid stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> you wrote the check. The teller didn't write it, and you mad with her. Right. See, the reason why I thought it was stupid because I didn't write that check. <laughs> But when I wrote some, oh, I was stupid too. <laughs> but this is, we're, 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 we're trying to get everybody to get to this point where you respond. You make a move based on possible options. What are my options? Because if they got you reacting, they got you constantly, you know, on the defense. In the respond mode, you had to, okay, what are my options? Right, and when you look at your options and you make a decision, and you say, okay, if, if, if you have a, I don't know, whatever business you have, a, a baking business, and you say, this is the way my business, the business is going to run, okay? And the, the, the structure of the business looks just like this triangle, right? If Mary Jo comes and she doesn't fit within this triangle, okay, and she wants to work for this triangle bakery, but she don't fit within this triangle. You cannot change your triangle. Your triangle has to stay the same, no matter who comes to work in your environment, no matter who comes patronize your business. Once that triangle is set, mm. you got to leave the triangle alone. The problem that most of us have as black business owners, we try to rearrange the triangle over and over again to fit the individuals. Mm. And you will never have a successful business. We deal with successful salons. We know they are good salons because UPS does not take cash. And stylists that run on a cash-only basis are going to go out of business. So they can't buy Ashtay because UPS doesn't take cash. So what do we do? Do we change our, our triangle? 
to I'm accommodate. Gonna have a, I'm gonna have a um uh um uh, 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 one. Can you pay by wick? <laughs> I'm gonna have a okay. I I can take that check department. I know it's bad, but I can take it anyway. Uh, no, you don't. You don't change. You can't change your triangle. You have to, your triangle needs to be so, and it don't have to be a triangle. I mean, you need to know what your business is going to be like. And, and you don't you change can't that. change it. And see, once you understand that, see, a spirit can only creep into a place that doesn't know what it is. Absolutely. A negative spirit can only dwell in a place that doesn't know. It cannot get into a place that it knows. I just can't get in me. You can't, you can't give me no negative stuff. You can't give me the negative stuff. One girl said, Michael, girl, Michael, 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 said, Michael, 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 you crazy, you crazy, Michael. She said, you need Jesus. I told her that day, I said, honey, if I didn't have Jesus, I wouldn't even have came up in here. <laughs> Because I know the devil is present up in here. <laughs> I carry Jesus with me everywhere I go. That's why that, that little stuff don't bother me. You understand what I'm saying? When you're immune to that stuff, you're immune to it. See, you got to be so filled that your ministry comes out. Oh, I mean, it, just, it, it comes out of you. And people get on your nerves real quick. Oh, you ain't ready. Oh, they, 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 they rub you the wrong way and you're about to go off you and you ain't ready. Because, see, you are, you, every one of us are ministers. We're ministering to people every single day. It's marketplace ministry. You can't stop and say, well, I got to build me a church. I put my name on the church. I got to have me a deacon board. I got to have me a sister board. Now, the deacon board broke. <laughs> the auxiliary department broke. But you go, you, you, no, you are ministering to people through what you have done. And you've accomplished things that you can help other people accomplish as well. Now, if you, if you ain't out of debt, don't talk to nobody about getting out of debt. Are you with me? I, I, I want to hear that stuff. You're trying to tell me some of you ain't inexperienced. So that's the problem this day. You got to get out yourself. You get out. You can help somebody. The reason why we can help so many people get out of debt is because, one, we have gotten out of debt. And we don't sing. We don't dance. We have no athletic abilities. <laughs> we don't have a master's or a PhD. But we do understand people. And we understand the behaviors of people because we behave the same way as, as well. Are y'all with me? See, it's time for us to make that change. It's time to make that change. That's why our heart cries out for our people. Our heart cries out. It ain't like my head. See, my, my, my head, you ever see anybody cry and the video cry don't mean nothing? But when their heart cries out to help people, that's a, that's a, we don't make enough money. We don't make enough money. I got a problem with that. Because there's so many people who need help who I can't help. That hurts me to my heart. And some people don't want to help nobody. So they don't have that same hurt. But that hurts me. We don't make enough money. I want to be a black billionaire. I want to be a billionaire. I don't kiss myself. I don't want to go there because, you know, black billionaires, they got problems. I want that problem. <laughs> Folks tell you, well, you know, how, you know how people who rich are, you know how when people get rich, you know they change. No, rich people don't change. You changed. You changed. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to change your mentality. It's okay to be rich. It's okay. It's good to be rich. Imagine how to ask somebody. I mean, just... There's different things that you got to do in life. How are you going to show your kids? How are you going to show your kids what it's like to be wealthy if you're not there? Talk all you want to. You better, you better understand what's going on in other races. In other races, they're teaching their kids. They're teaching them. You, you, you don't know. I mean, I, I, 
my daughters go to school with all types of kids, Chinese, Asians, Koreans, um, people from um, Switzerland, all types. I mean, they get in the house, they may have all types of comments. Nimpa, Wusa, Wumba, Megwa, Wumsa, what? You know, all different types of languages. So I, you know, I'm, I, I'm now getting my, I'm, I, every time I take, talk to somebody, I got my little notes, my little, my little, what you call a, a, a cheat sheet. So I get around folks and I want to know what they know. And I, 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 I was sitting by a lady on the plane, I went to California. I said, um, how do you say, how you say shampoo in Vietnamese? She said, sabon, 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 sabon. Okay, how do you say oil, like hair oil? She said, uh, top yao, top yao. I said, okay, top y'all, wrote that stuff down. Okay, how you say hi? Uh, Galban, Galban. Now, I ain't saying it exactly right on some of these, but I'm getting close because I, I, as I talk to different races, I'm going to tell you what happened. I said, how you say hello? She said, child. What is your name? Dunye, Dunye. And I talk the same, I look at them the same and look at me. They say Dunye, I say Dunye. Because <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning. Then I talk to another lady. See, I, I, I went to say her, I said, child, Gabon, Gabon. She said, what do you say? <laughs> she shook her head. She said, I'm not Vietnamese, I'm from Cambodia. <laughs> so I had a conversation, what? Well, how do you say hello in Cambodia? She said, South Dae, South Dae. So I wrote it down. Because, see, I don't want to be ignorant when I have an opportunity to be educated. Oh, man. Then I, I asked her, I saw another lady, I thought she was from Cambodia because she was her friend, and I said to her, South Daye, South Daye. She looked at me and said, what do you say? <laughs> me no, me no Cambodia. She said, I'm from Lao. I said, well, how you say hello in Lao? She said, Sabadi, Sabadi. So I wrote it down. And then I met the last one. Where was this other guy from? He was from, I think he was from Thailand. Yeah, he was, he was from Thailand. And he said, I said, well, how do you say I'm feeling good? She said, Cop Gao, Cop Gao. Cop Gao Lee, Cop Gao Lee. Thank you, I feel good. I want to learn their language. So when I walk into a Vietnamese store, I can speak a little Vietnamese. So you don't understand that I don't have to speak the full language. I just have to speak enough for them to smile at me. <laughs> because once I break that barrier, it's not in failing, it's in trying. And see, we got to understand that, that we're not going to always deal with brothers and sisters. We got to have an opportunity to get the knowledge ourselves. So I, 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 got my little, I got my little stuff. Tutane, Tutane, Michael, Tutane. That's, my name is Michael. Tutane, oh, I'm, I'm writing my stuff down because I want to know a little bit, especially when I have an opportunity to get educated. Right, plus Michael, he knows that China is the fastest growing economy. I mean, it's the country that is, I mean, they're growing tremendously. So he's preparing himself to start going to China, to look for opportunities in China, to learn the language. So you got to start moving in the direction that you want to go. And the people, the people will treat you right. They'll treat you right. I tell them, they say, well, they say what's your name? I said, Michael Woods, Michael Woods. They said, you look like Tiger Woods. You want to get in Tiger Woods? I said, Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods, my cousin. I'm Michael Woods. He Tiger Woods. And they laugh. You not Tiger Woods, cousin. I broke the ice. Once you break the ice, they're a little bit nicer. So people are not just typically racist. If you start talking, I mean, I go on some places and you got to talk that language. You know, I'm from the South, so I don't care what type of dialect somebody have. When they're, hey, Billy, how things going? Hey, everything's going fine. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> Say, Michael, what you got for me today, man? I got two boxes of shampoo. I got some conditioner. And I'll bring it right in for you. I 
don't care what people think about me. It's what I think about myself. See, once you know who you are, once you know you feel with what God has put inside of you, the only way somebody can take it out is if you let them. People say, did I offend you? You could not offend me. You know why? I didn't even accept what you said. <laughs> what you say? You can't offend somebody unless you accept it. Why go off when it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't relating to you? Yes, question. Any questions so far? See, there's different signs that you're going you're gonna to see when you're going through this thing called life. And people say, well, how do, you, how, do you, how do you build wealth? Number one, you got to get your credit straight. Everybody write down credit. Say credit. 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 If your credit ain't right, it's hard now, for your um, money to get hold right. Hold on one second, um, Willie. Just very quickly, um, with, your, with your attitude, just some key points. Um, your attitude towards your fear helps even the playing field. You face them instead of running from them. You do See, what? Face them. them. Every time you face a fear, you never have to deal with that fear again. You will overcome that fear. Positive action confuses the devil. Ow! Ow! Somebody get on your nerve. Ow! Talk positive. That will confuse them. Girl, you look so nice today. No action negative. confirms Ooh. his ability. Oh, no action. No action? No you ain't going to do nothing after they said what you said that you could not do, and you don't do nothing? You no, are just no, confirmed. No action is you write a bad check, and you wait for them to call you. You get the notice before they do. Take action. Call them first, and you'll see something is going to happen to you when you do that. Try it one time. You will see that it's going to expand you. Mm. Because, again, no fear. No fear. You ain't scared of nothing. They don't need to have faith. No fear. No need for faith. No faith. No need for God. Who you going to If you got everything, you, why should you have faith for something you can do yourself? See, when you know that you need God, it takes faith. When you don't need him, you, you, you ain't got no fear. You ain't trying to do nothing. It's time for you to move up. It's okay to be scared because that confirms that, one, you know your God is bigger than the problem that you're dealing with. Right, right. See, what you've been doing for so long is that you've been looking at yourself through a microscope and letting other people look at you through a microscope when all God does is look at you through a magnifying glass. He knows the possibility where you can go. He knows what you can do. But you're dealing with what people say about you. You're dealing with that little stuff, that little stupid stuff they're talking about. Here you are, ready to fly, ready to go to your next level. And you down here having little problems that you can solve overnight. So I say, well, you need faith to get a car. No, you don't. You need good credit. Right. <laughs> Anybody can get a car. There are more cars than people. <laughs> need faith. You don't need no faith to get no car. Anybody get a car. You got good credit. You go get a car. You got bad credit, you can get a car. Oh, you have like five hundred dollars. Somebody say you can't get a car. They, they ain't got no good credit, or they ain't got five hundred dollars. Cause somebody give you a car, they more cars than people. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't that you were afraid of success. Maybe it was that you were afraid to do the necessary things to become to become successful. Because see, it is much easier. Oh. To live on welfare. It's much easier. It is much easier to First have. First 15 with my check. It's much easier to have a little goal. Little bitty goal. Than to have a big goal. See, when you start dreaming, oh, when man. you start dreaming, people around you start acting funny. People around you don't look at you the same. 
Because they're thinking in their mind, oh, she she thinks she's better than I am. Oh. And that's when you start worrying about what other people think. See, because it when is. you determine that you want to be successful, things are going to change. Yeah. No offense much about it. Things are going to change. I don't care who they are. Things are going to change. And with us, sometimes we're so caught up in what people think that we don't want to live in the nice neighborhood. We don't want to live in the suburbs because there's a stereotype that, oh, you got to move away from us? You can't stay in the same neighborhood? No, I can't. <laughs> because this house won't fit in this neighborhood. Are you with me? And see, don't, you, once you begin to understand that you know who you are, you know what you're trying to do, and you're trying to raise the bar up a little bit, you don't worry about people. Because you're going to get challenged. I don't care what level you're at. No matter what level you're at, you're still going to get challenged. And I can understand that fear because the home we live in now, before we put a house on the lot, before we put a house on there, we went and bought the land, two and a half acres, lake in the back. Oh, beautiful, serene golf course, coming off the back of the golf course. We well, no house that we bought the land. We was on the land having a good time. And we was out there one day. I said, well, let me take my, my daughters out fishing in the lake because, you know, I at least checked to see what the rules were. And in order to fish on the lake, you had to have property on the lake. Well, one day, the man from the golf course, he came down, the police officer. They got 24-hour poli policemen on a golf course. Y'all hear me? So the man drove down. He was driving real fast all through the ground, all through the, trying to get down to the lake. And I'm over there with my girls, you know, they, they just throwing their rod. They ain't trying to catch nothing. They just throwing their rod because they're scared of fish may bite. They ain't never caught no fish before. <laughs> so they're just throwing their rod. You know how it is, Flash, when you're fishing, right? You want to catch one of them big ones? They ain't want to catch nothing. They just like putting the little uh, chicken on the, on the back, and, on the end of the rod and throwing it out there. So they were just fishing. The police officer came over there. He said, sir, he walked up to him. He said, sir, you can't, you can't be over here. You can't be over here. And you know me, at that, you know how I got that feeling earlier? <laughs> because, you know, the, 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 the super Negro. <laughs> well, I mean, well, his, his words were, if I was you, I'd go back where I came from. That's what got me right there. If I was you, I'd go back where you came from. You don't know who I am. <laughs> so, but, but again, I did not react. I said, sir, so... You know, what are, the, what are the rules about fishing here on the lake? Well, he says, so only anybody who owns property over here, this is private property, and we control, we, can, we patrol this area 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And it's my job to make sure that nobody comes on any of these properties out here and do anything illegal. That includes fishing. <laughs> so my girls are over there fishing. I said, well, y'all go back, go back to fishing, you know. I, I said to the officer, I said, well, sir, so you're saying to me that anybody who owns any of this land also owns the lake? And that any of the people on that side over there, and that side over there, and that side over there, can they have three houses on the lake? And then this other one, I know there ain't no house there, but whoever owns this land right here too? And he said, that's right, sir. That's what I said. I said, well, sir, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Michael Woods. This is my wife, Ramona. Those are my two kids, Taylor and Ashley. And we own this property right here, this two and a half acres on the back of a golf course with the lake. <laughs> See, but had I not known that I'm supposed to be there, imagine how I would have acted. And they would have took me out in handcuffs. Drag me across that lawn. <laughs> but see, I knew I was supposed to be there. I knew that was mine from way back when. I just had to know in my mind, in my heart, that I deserved it. Because you're going to go there. Success is a crazy thing. Because I don't care how successful or unsuccessful you are, you're going to deal with some stuff. 
So just the people on one level don't, don't deal with that stuff. Oh, there's different levels. Every level you go up, you better be ready to go through some crazy stuff. And you always know, and I always tell Michael this, you always know when your dreams are too small. Because when your dreams are too small, you have more and more little things that bother you. You have more and more little folks thinking that, uh, that interfere with your day-to-day. -day. See, when Michael starts getting consumed with little things, I know that he's become complacent. And then I say, you know, Michael, you need to, you need to go to another, another level, honey. And he, he knows. So you, you'll see that every time your, your friends, your coworker, you know, people around you start getting on your nerves over the little things, your dreams are too small. You need to, you need to refocus yourself on something that is much bigger. Because when you. you when you start, when, you're, when your dream is up there, you, can't, you don't even notice what these folks right here are doing. I mean, you don't even see it. It don't even bother you. But when, when your dream is right here, I mean, you see what everybody doing. If you got time to check out everybody's every move, you, don't, you are not focusing on anything. You are a what? Drifter. Hello? And that's what, this is what, this is what the plan feels. Once you get your credit in order, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need no credit counseling organization. You don't need no uh, debt consolidation organization. You don't need no sit me down and pray for me organization. You need to stop spending more than you're making. I mean, it, it's really simple. Everybody learned math. That's one subject everybody had to learn. Some people may not call it rap, math. Some may call it arithmetic. But it's the same thing. And once you learn those things, if you make this, don't spend this. Now, you can look good. You can, you, you can go bling bling all you want to. But see, we done been through that stuff before. We done been through it. I'm not afraid to tell anybody that I, oh man, you faking. Because you know what? A faker know a faker. You know it. And the only difference between us is that, see, we are probably the only African Americans who are really transparent to you. Transparent in the way that we don't care whether you know our business. Because we done jumped through those hoops. We don't care. See, if we were still dealing with it, we couldn't share with you. See, a, a testimony is only a test that you took and passed. If you, don't, if you don't have no testimony, you ain't took no test. Or if you took the test, you found it. So we done been through that. And it's our objective to help some people. Now, is everybody in this room going to get help? No. Because there's some people who I don't care what you do, they're going to go back and start doing the same thing they did yesterday. No doubt. Ain't no need us trying to even think that we're at that level. We don't have that type of power. And, you know, our pastor always says that... Um, the definition of an insane person is someone doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. See, the tale of three lies tell it all. You got three people, Mike, Ann, and John. How many of you know about FICO scores? FICO scores. Anybody know about FICO scores? Who don't know? Who want to know? Good. Because, again... Ignorance is a bad place to be when you have opportunity to get education. See, you have two important numbers. One is your Social Security number, and the other one is your FICO score. Or some people call it the Beacon score. When somebody's going to give you credit, they're going to rate you on where you are. See, you can tell somebody a lot of stuff. Oh, I got OK credit. Ask them one question, what's your FICO score? It will determine how good or how bad your credit is. 
or if you have no credit. That's another thing. When you go to a bank and you have your dream on paper and, and that you make this much and you're going to just double in sales, and you, you know, and the banker's like, oh, yeah, that's wonderful, you know, and, you know, and they're, they're making you feel good, but they're going to go right after. That credit report would tell it all. This number right here. Because this number lets them know what your history has been. What have you done that continues to be done over and over again? What is your habit? habit. You know, habits are very hard to change. So if you have a habit of not paying your bills, chances are you're not going to get the loan. Correct. And your FICO score, your Beacon score, actually shows It'll range from like 400. Some of them go like there's three different ones from TransUnion, Equifax, and TRW. It ranged from like maybe 350 right. up to about 900. Right. And see, we know what it's like to be close to 350. Our credit was so bad, you know, they got little bars. And the bars let you know how, how high. I was didn't even have a little red mark on it. <laughs> it was like upside down. <laughs> It was hiding underneath the bar. But the lower the number, the worse your credit. And the you lower want, the number, the what? You want to strive to have a beacon score of 700 or more. You know, when you get to 700 or more, you are bankable. Bankable. You're loanable. Bankable. Yes. And that's very important because, because you got to understand in your banking relationship, it's important to have a high beacon score. You will get approved more than you get denied. And when you go into the bank as a business trying to get money, they're looking at those things. They're just looking at how good you look. Because I told y'all, I look what? I look good. <laughs> Plus, the cost of getting the money is less the better your credit is. For instance, if you see that the banking loans now, as far as percentage of interest rate they charge, if you know the interest rate is about 5%, 6% on a house, but they're charging you 9 and 10%, that's a red flag. It's a red flag that you got bad credit and that you got a very low speaking score. Are you with me? Right, because this example here is, is three people that they have purchased the same exact house, I believe it yes. was. Mm -hmm. The same exact house. The same, the same exact house. Same neighborhood. Same exact neighborhood. Same everything. The only thing that's different are their credit scores. So that means that you could be living right next to someone that's paying almost $1,300 a month, and someone with good credit is paying $887. That, so this person has almost four or $500 more per month to save, to do what they want to do Go on vacation. just because they have good credit. See, a lot of us, because our credit is so bad, we are paying 10 times what we should for everything. So no matter what you do, you cannot ever get ahead. The only way you could ever get ahead is if you stop spending and start paying your old stuff, your past. You got to deal with your past. Got to deal with it in order to get to your future. Mm -hmm. Nate, you had a question right here. No, you yeah, ask for personal. that on personal. This is, your this is personal. personal. You ask for your FICO score. Like if you go online and get your credit report, there's a fee that you can pay, like maybe $12. Depends. It, it ranges. But you can ask, I do want your Beacon score or your FICO score. And you can pay for that. Some credit report agencies have it on there. Some of them don't. It's best to pull all three copies of your credit report. At How the many? same time. All three, from all three different agencies. We have the information inside the book, uh, yeah. against the grain, the telephone numbers, and everything. But you pull all three so you can see where you really are. And then you ask for a um, beacon score. You may have to pay extra for that. But you get your beacon score, you see where you are on all three. Of those reports. Same thing in Canada. Doesn't make a difference where you are, whether you're in Canada or the US, it still works the same. Money works the same on most sides of the border. Okay? So you get that information, it gives you ammunition. Because you know the worst feeling in the world is to walk into the bank and you're trying to get a loan 
and the man got to tell you what's on your credit report. You unprepared. I mean, they tell you all this good stuff, and then you know they know you know they're gonna say no. You know it. Why are you gonna take me through all these hoops? You know, you I'm sitting there trying to wait for to get the loan, and you gonna you gonna you gonna you gonna say, well, Mr. Woods, how'd you how'd you do it? You know, you okay? And they read down your credit report, and you know they get down to a student loan you had 10 years ago. And Mr. Woods, why didn't you pay that student loan for $25 back in 1996? If I had the $25, <laughs> I would have paid it. I did not have the $25. That's why I did not pay it. And then they ask you another question. Keep going down the line. All these different questions on the things. Well, Mr. Woods, why didn't you pay that K Jewelers for $15? If I had the $15, I would have paid the K jeweler. They said, well, Mr. Woods, how did you pay your bills? I said, listen, man, I got a method to the way I pay my bills. I understand exactly how I'm going to pay them every single month. I put everybody in there. One man called me up and said, Mr. Woods, is it time for you to pay me? I said, listen, sir, I know how I pay my bills. And I paid them with a the system. I said, I put all my bills in a pot. And I shuffle them up. <laughs> and I shuffle them up some more. And I take them round and round and round. And I said, I pull one out. <laughs> and that's the one I pay that month. <laughs> you the one got to pay the bill. And not just that, but you have to decide what's in your budget. I mean, fashion change, I mean, it's, it's every day. And clothes range from one extreme to the next. When you, when you reach the point that you're sick and tired of sick and tired, you won't care what people think about you as far as how you look. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with going to a consignment store. Nothing. If y'all ain't into a consignment store, you better go to one. I'm here to tell y'all. You better to go to a consignment store and you go to one in the best neighborhoods too. And some of your wealthiest, some of your wealthiest women shop at a consignment store. There's nothing wrong with consignment store. There is no reason why teenagers Now, I mean, I have a consignment store that I go to. It's called Coco's in, in Greensboro. Love it. Love that consignment store. Because I, 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 I love a suit called St. John's. I mean, I love St. John's. But St. John's is St. John's. St. John's is expensive. And this consignment store, they'll have St. John's. You know, they'll have St. John's that I can purchase there. Um, but my girls... Kids grow out of clothes like water, like that. I mean, like that. I cannot conceive spending forty dollars on a pair of pants for either one of my girls. I won't do it. Till this day, I still don't do it. Pay less. <laughs> Pick and pay for it. Our girls don't have that. I got to shop at this store mentality. Shoes are shoes. You put on a different top, a different bottom, and you walk real fast. <laughs> but no, but I mean, no, our, our, our girls, they don't, they have never asked us for a name brand. We've never allowed them to take us there. Now they like limited too. But I go to the consignment store and look for the label limited to. Because see, you gotta think about it. See, the moment you begin to get caught up, you, 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 you really get messed up. See, we drive a 1994 Ford Explorer and a 1996 Oldsmobile. And I mean, it looks good. The truck a little old. But see, you got to understand that we understand mathematics. And we understand that we ain't had a car payment in over 10 years. And we understand that if I can add $500 a month times 12 months, 
is $6,000 a year, right? Yes. Times 10 years is $60,000, not including interest. So I can drive my future away, or I can ride into my future. You know, and woo, but you know, you have, to, you have to teach your kids. I talk to my girls every single day about why I purchase what I purchase. And every Christmas, I give them, they, you know, they like to buy for their teachers, and they get to buy for three classmates. And I give them a budget of how much they can spend total. So they have to find a way to find nice gifts for their teachers and their classmates that fits within this budget. I don't let them just pick out gifts for every person and then there's a total at the register. Uh-uh, I know what the total is going to be before they get to that register. Because when your money run out, you better start cutting some teachers out. But Miss Jones, she ain't getting nothing. But, I mean, every year they get wonderful gifts. I mean, you will be surprised how you're able to fit within the budget. Once there is a budget. Yes, once there is a budget. You know, with the, with the car, when we bought our, ex, what is the, what's the truck oh, we got? The, the Explorer. When we bought that Explorer and it was used, one of our relatives also, they, they purchased a Suburban. Big old sub navigator. Woo! Brand new. They were riding I mean, up high. Woo. Pretty. <laughs> they were riding in the gator. Looking down on us. I mean, it was it was it, it's it's pretty. I mean, it's still a pretty car. Lean in the cut. What our girls noticed was that when it was family reunion time, right? And um everybody was ooh and eyeing. Their navigator. Nobody said, hey, Michael, Moore, you got a new truck. You know, I mean, we didn't get no dap. We didn't no get compliments. no congratulations, no compliments, <laughs> nothing, right? So um, my oldest, she said, Mom, why don't they like our car? And see, I knew that was a, sign. A, a, a time where I could implant a seed in my daughter that will grow for a long time. I said, Taylor, let me explain to you what happened. What's happening, what has happened is that Uncle such and such, that car is brand new, is nice, beautiful, leather, smells new. Mm. It cost them $45,000. And I had to write it down, $45,000. Now, Mom and Dad, we bought this truck. Do you like it? Yeah, Mommy, I like it. Good. Now, this truck cost us $2,500. Now, I want you to subtract those two. How much you get? She subtracted it. She said, now, I said, the difference, we put it in the bank. And your daddy don't have to go get a second job. And it's like a, this light bulb rang in my daughter's head. And she really understands it now. So, so she's thinking in terms of, oh, when I turn 15, um, I'm going to get me a, a used car. And she's not thinking in terms of, I want a brand new car and make car payments. She don't want no car payments. She's already thinking in terms of, I don't want no car payments. Car because payments are crazy. You got to understand the way the game is played. See, you got to understand that in this game, whether it's a building that you have that looks good on the outside, or whether it's the car that looks good on the outside, the person who is making the money is the person that you're paying. And you become a slave to that person. And see, I don't know about you. I didn't want to be a slave anymore. I got tired of being a slave, having to do those things, have to make those decisions. I can't spend the quality time with my kids that I want to, that I want to have. See, the one thing that we do differently is that we're transparent to you. 
We're probably one of the only couples that really break it down. And we ain't, we, we're not afraid to share with you. See, we, we need to have more business workshops that's real. That's real. Because you got, you got desires in your heart that you're trying to accomplish. Things that you want to do. If nobody ever tells you that it can be done, you don't believe it can be done. So what we're doing is we're sharing with you that it can be done. You can do it. You can do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can do it. Yes, you can. People can't tell you can't do it. Yes, I can. You're going to have a yes, I can mentality when you leave from here. Yes, I can. Because you are ready to go against the grain. That's why we wrote the book, Against the Grain. We felt it in our hearts that we had to share with people that yes, you can. That book is helping so many people to turn around. We ain't selling the book because we're trying to make another check. We okay to a certain extent. We okay. And we, we really okay. We don't owe nobody. We owe a mortgage. We stay in a house that's probably 1 1.7, 1 1.6 million, 1.7 million dollars. We owe less than $400,000 on it. And it make me mad I'm allowed to pay them off. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Don't make me mad. Because I pay well, you I, off. I, I, when, we, when we did the mortgage, we did... We did a 15-year mortgage. We did a 15-year mortgage. We got 13 more years to go, and we're really excited about it. Because in the next, in, in, even if we don't accelerate the payment, we will be finished with our home in 13 years, and it's a it's a wonderful blessing. So in 13 years, I'm gonna get me a Bentley. Amen. Now, if we pay our house before the 13 years, when you see me in the Bentley, it's because you know the house is paid for. <laughs> But right now, we're going to drive that truck. <laughs> Diamond in the back, sunroof top. <laughs> because we don't care what people think. And that's all we're trying to express to you all, is that we want to do the necessary things that help us get there. And one of the most important areas that has helped us get in there is understanding the importance of tithing. See, tithing is it, it, it's one of the most important facts. It's, it, it's so important that we cannot leave it out. See, a lot of times people don't understand the power of tithing. The power of it. It's some heavy, ooh. Tithing sets into motion the wheels for your success. It places fire in the engine to fuel the train to reach its desired destination. Sometimes you wonder why you can't reach the destination. Are you tithing right? See, I'm not giving to any man. I'm giving to God's mission. Just like I put my tithes in this church. I'm not giving to physically the man. I'm looking at what, I want to glorify God. What that man does with it after I put my tithes in there, that's on him. That's on and him. See, and see, tithing helps you to change your small-minded thinking. For example, if, and I have to go into the beauty business because that's what I do. If you are a booth runner in a salon, when your mind is small, all you're concerned with is what the owner of the salon doing with your boot ring, what the pastor doing with your tithe. Don't worry about that. That doesn't matter. Do what you're supposed to do and let it go. Let it go. See, that's, what, that's, what, that's what's good about tithing is that one, you release it, it comes back to you. You release it, it comes back to you. Now, you release a little bit, you may not, you may not feel that effect. I mean, as, as you release more, it begins to... And you release more, and you... Whoa! Good Lord, I didn't know you were going to do that for me. And you release more, and oh, good Lord! I didn't know you were going to do that for me. See, what happens is the more you release, the more it comes back and it, it, it bounces you to another stratosphere. And people see why you're blessed. They see why it. You ain't got to tell nobody. I don't care who. I want to be the biggest tither in my church. 
I want to tithe more than the pastor. Because I want our ministry to grow. I want my pastor's life to be blessed. I don't want no poor pastor. He barely making it. Getting up every Sunday talking about you can go, you can be there. And he ain't going nowhere. I want a pastor who's prosperous minded. Who's moving. Showing that God can provide all that we ask or think. That's the type of person I want to follow. Someone will give me good spiritual advice. But if they're doing something, oh, I'm excited about life. Right. And another thing that tithing gives you also is discipline. Mm. And that's what most of us lack is discipline. See, if you learn how to set aside 20%, 10 for tithing and 10 for yourself, and you live off of 80%, all of your financial woes will be gone. Mm. You have to learn how to discipline yourself. See, I don't know if anyone that's married in here, um, your wife, well, at the time, your girlfriend had an apartment over here, right? And she earned X amount of dollars. And she lived right here. She had her house payment, her car payment, her heat, water, so on and so forth, right? And she right here, right? And then that's my boyfriend over there. Hey! Now he got, he's got his car, his house, his water, so on and so forth. And he got his check, right? Now he's living fine, right? All right. I'm living fine, right? Then we merge. We merge, right? And I no longer have that bill over there. All those bills are now gone. They're gone, right? But we still got the same two incomes that we used to have when I was there and he was here, right? The, the mistake that we make as soon as we get married, get united. One. We immediately extend our expenses to meet both checks. What we're supposed to do is merge the money. Keep the expenses low. Michael and I, we always lived strictly off of my check. Not my check. Because he was always higher. He was always higher. We saved his 100%. We live off of mine. See, her check was lower. So we said, at our worst point, in the valley, in the valley, we're going to be okay. Yes. And when we're on the peak, oh, we're really going to be okay. But we're going to stay with our mindset in the valley as we rise to the peak. See, the moment you begin to expand beyond your finances, you mess yourself up. And it just don't happen if you're married. If you are single, and you're in this single world, and you're creating more bills, and you're creating more debt, and you're buying more things to try to impress people, what happens is you dig yourself into the same hole that the married couple dig themselves into. Right. It doesn't matter whether you're single or married. The same stuff happens. It's just happening only to you. So you got to understand the way that it's... But tithing helps you to understand that there's a discipline. And see, first you make it more, you can save 10%. And then you tithe 10%. And you live off of 80%. What you want to move aggressively towards is living off of 65%. Saving, 15%. Tithing, your 10%. And then you want to get to the point where you can live off 60%. You can tithe 15. Save 15. Are you with me? I mean, so, you know, the dynamics are going to change but you want to understand the dynamics. If you're at a point where you got a lot of bills, then you tithe and you pay your bills down. And you may not be able to save. That sounds crazy.
But let me give you some math because everybody can understand mathematics. That's one thing I like about that subject. All you can, all you can do is add and subtract. Everything else you'll learn. When if you're you trying have, to make a decision, when you're trying to make save, a decision, you should always put it in numerical terms. If it doesn't add up, don't do it. Forget about your emotions. Take that out. Your emotions will mess you up. You got a bill that's a thousand dollars. It's past due. It's ruining your credit. It's at an interest rate of twenty-two percent. You have a hundred dollars every single month that you think is money that you can save. Save hundred dollars a month. The hundred dollars a month that you're saving goes into an, a savings account that gets two percent interest. What is 22 minus 2? 20, right? That difference means that you are going in the hole 20% every single month. So I don't care how many $100 you save, you are still 20% in the hole. It is best you take that $100 that you have Pay that 22% off and then start saving. Are you with me? So you can tell by the interest rate whether or not that interest rate like 18, 22, 24, and you're trying to save $50, $100, you better try to pay that debt off because otherwise it's a negative. You're at a negative 20%. When you're at the point where your bills are not at that point, you say, okay, well, I got some money I'm investing. It's got about 8% interest, but I have a credit card that I keep the balance low, and it has about 12%. Well, okay, that's okay, because I can choose whether I want to put money on that credit card or not, or I can choose not to, meaning I can choose to spend on crazy stuff, or I can choose to invest my money wisely. Okay? Yeah. The next event that you're going to, instead of going out and buying a new outfit, Go into your closet and actually, I mean, just really look in it. I mean, really go through the back of the closet where you hadn't been in a long time and say, there's got to be something in here that I can wear. See, when you start, when you start having discipline, that's what you start doing. Correct. You start, you start being more frugal. Frugal. Everybody say frugal. Frugal. There's nothing wrong with being frugal. Frugal. I am frugal. Someone can call you cheap. No, I am frugal. There's a difference between being cheap and being frugal. Being frugal is I can I can understand.